Welcome back to part six of the Trudon 2.0 series. I honestly never expected to make this many videos about one printer, but there's a lot to unpack here and a lot of you seem quite interested. So thank you for joining us. And if you're new here, let's get you caught up. The Trudon 2.0 is a large format Core XY 3D printer that was inspired by the Voron 2.4 design. It comes mostly pre-assembled, only requiring a few hours to build. One of the main differences between the Trudon and the Voron is that the Trudon runs RepRap firmware and the Voron runs Clipper. So in the last video, we switched from the stock RepRap firmware to Clipper firmware. The topic of this video is input shaping and how we can mitigate the resonances of the machine using this technique. So in a previous video, I illustrated how to do input shaping on the Trudon in RepRap. But now that we're running Clipper, we're back to square one. So we need to redo this process the Clipper way. The input shaping procedure in Clipper is considerably more sophisticated than in RepRap, and is one of the main draws towards this firmware. Marlin only recently added the input shaping capabilities to their firmware, and so far the implementation is the most rudimentary of the three. Due in part to the fact that they don't support the use of an accelerometer for data collection. The accelerometer is a tool for characterizing the resonances of a machine. In RepRap, we can use the data from the accelerometer to make an informed judgment call about which shaping function and frequency will be most effective at reducing the mechanical vibrations. In Clipper, the process is much more automated and the data from the accelerometer is automatically analyzed and a shaping function and frequency are recommended to the user without the need for visual inspection and interpretation. When this machine was still running RepRap, I connected the accelerometer to the motherboard via the LCD ribbon cables. In my Clipper configuration, I've included provisions to connect the accelerometer in the same way. It would also be possible to connect the accelerometer to the Raspberry Pi directly, but this will require some additional firmware configuration, including setting up the Pi as a secondary MCU. I prefer the LCD approach because at some point, you may wish to put the Pi inside the base of the printer. And this way you wouldn't need to open up the machine every time you want to reconnect the accelerometer and remeasure the resonances. So in RepRap, we use the LIS3DH accelerometer. But in Clipper, we're going to be using the ADXL345 instead. When you're ready to connect the accelerometer, you'll first want to comment out any lines in the config that pertain to the LCD. Then uncomment the lines that concern the accelerometer. Next, turn off the printer and remove the LCD. The required connections for the accelerometer are as indicated here. Feel free to pause the video so you can get a closer look. We then need to mount the accelerometer on the printhead. For this purpose, we can simply download and print a mount that was previously designed for the Voron Afterburner toolhead. Since this Trunon version is identical, besides being injection molded as opposed to printed plastic. With the accelerometer mounted and connected, we'll run the accelerometer query command to ensure that the firmware is communicating with it. We're now ready to collect the resonance data. We'll home the printer first, then issue the calibrate shaper command. This will prompt the printhead to start vibrating at progressively higher frequencies, starting with the x-axis and then moving to the y-axis. Once the data collection is complete, we'll SSH into our Pi to generate our shaper graphs. We first navigate to the temp folder, then issue the following commands. We'll then switch from SSH to SFTP to download the graphs using the git shaper calibrate.png command. If you're on Mac, the graphs will go to your home directory by default. If you're on PC, just do a file search to see where they ended up. These graphs will allow us to analyze the frequency response of our printer. There's a lot of useful information embedded in these graphs, and we can learn a lot about our printer by inspecting them. This is one aspect of Clipper firmware that I prefer over RepRap. RepRap just gives you the raw data without any analysis. Clipper will plot the data for you and fit the different shaping functions to it, then give you a recommendation of which function and frequency yields the biggest reduction in vibrations. Depending on the appearance of the shaper graphs, you may also notice other issues with your printer. This serves as a great diagnostic tool and is one of the benefits of this process beyond simply configuring input shaping. In my case, I noticed that there is some component of resonance in the Z axis of the printer when the print head is moving in Y. This could indicate an instability with the surface the printer is on or something loose on the printhead. In order to troubleshoot this, I tried moving my printer onto a concrete slab. 
Surprisingly, I didn't see much improvement over the carpeted floor it was sitting on previously. I then did a partial disassembly of the print head and tried tightening a few things, but again, without much impact. I can see a bit of vertical deflection on the print head, so it's possible that the bumps in my shaper graph are resulting from that small amount of play. Well, not ideal, until I can get to the bottom of this issue, at least input shaping will compensate for it in the meantime. With the optimal shaping parameters identified, I updated my config file to include these settings. I then ran another ringing tower test print to see the effect. With the input shaper active, the ringing was completely gone. This technique really is a game changer, allowing us to print at much higher speeds without loss of quality. So I hope this illustration helped you in your process of input shaping on your printer, whether it be a Trudon or otherwise. Thank you to my Patreons for supporting the production of this video and all future videos. If you're interested in joining us, you can do so at the link down below. Not only will you get early access to these videos, behind the scenes content and supplementary material, but you'll also have access to our catalog of 3D printable models that are optimized for sale. So if you wanna start a 3D printing business, that's a great place to start. Let me know if you guys wanna see more videos in this series or if you're fed up and sick and tired of hearing about this printer. I do have lots of other printers that I could talk about and provide my insights on. So maybe I'll move on to another topic, but if you do wanna see more, please do let me know. So until next time, my name's Taylor, this is YGK3D, happy printing.